this Flash and Action Script 3 lesson that's accompanied by a free source file at developphp.com in the Flash tab will show you how to dynamically render and place list components using Flash Action Script 3 and also when the user clicks one of your list items we show you how to access the value of what they clicked and display it on stage. I'm going to select create new flash action script 3 file and once inside I'm gonna resize my stage to maybe 300 wide and 200 high and you go 240 that looks great now I'm going to add another layer call the bottom layer double click it and rename it status text top one AS3 short for action script 3 on the AS text layer or the status text layer I'm going to drag out a dynamic text field give it the name of status text instance name and this is going to be reporting what the user clicks on in the list I'm going to make like a, a simulated mp3 player list status text single line 30 is a little bit large about 24 22 let's center it okay Bang, yep 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 okay now we're going to program in the data grid let's get this off the AS3 layer first put it on the status text layer we can lock the AS3 layer. Now let's highlight the AS3 layer and press F9. And here we're going to type in the import for the controls for the list. That way we can use it. Now let's go into the components library and drag out a list component put it on stage everything's locked let's put it on this layer now highlight it and press control X get it off stage and I do that so we have that instance now in our library so now we can use it dynamically easily enough okay so now the next line we're gonna create the the new instance of the list component that way we can place it dynamically okay let's get back in our actions panel by pressing F9 let's type in var list list equals new list so now we have a new list object with an instance name of list okay now we're going to say list dot set size this is going to set the sizing the width and height of the entire list object and inside we're going to go maybe 100 by 100 a little square you can make yours any size you want so 100 comma 100 now we're going to claim move property that way we can place it directly where we want to with the exact coordinates we want on stage I'm gonna place mine at <clears throat> maybe 80 X position and a Y position of 30 semicolon and now we can start adding items to the list so we say list dot add item and we open and close parenthesis semicolon within the parenthesis we're going to open and close the curly brackets or the curly brace and inside the curly brace we're going to add the word label colon and then string and that string is going to be what's what appears on that list item 
So let's say C, Control C on that. Now Control V, Control V, Control V. Let's make uh, seven of them. So let's track one, two, three, four, five, six, and track seven. Okay, now all we have to do is add child. list. And that's pretty much the basics of populating it with the data you want and adding it to stage. So let's see if that works. Let's press control enter. And there it is. You can see the scroll automatically comes up because we only made it 100 by 100 and it has seven items in it. If there was only five items in it, it wouldn't need its scroll bar here but it automatically puts its scroll bar there and that way the user can get to all the items no matter what size you make it and when they click right now it's not doing anything yet because we haven't programmed that in yet so let's do that right now let's make it report to this status text field the value of the label that the person clicked so now let's head back into our actions panel and right under that let's add an event listener to that list component and it's going to be event dot change all caps and the name of the function will be item click makes good sense press control C on that now let's make the function here's the function that fires off on the change event and this is going to be event colon event colon void open a curly brace close the curly brace now we have a nice function nest now inside we're just going to make that status test field on stage update each time they select an item there. This is going to be equal to you selected and then the value is going to be placed in by claiming we're going to append to that text and use the event we're going to target the event object which will be the list event dot target dot selected index or selected item dot label so that will effectively give us the label value of what they select so let's try that out see you select the track 5 you select the track 7 track 3 and if this was an mp3 player you just start playing that track okay so now let's move that bad boy over a little to about 94 that's better and let's see let's take a look at this here see how it says event.target.selectedItem.label I can take this list instance name and replace event.target with that list instance and it's the same thing see it's the same exact functionality so that shows you exactly what that event.target is doing it's just targeting the object that happens to be accessing accessing this function that's all it does so event.target is equal to list and let me show you another trick I'm going to show you how instead of having to write all of these in you can make a simple little quick loop that will handle it all so let's see let's go here right here where all of these are rendered in 
let's go ahead and comment those out and let's place in a loop a loop is nice for dynamics that way you don't have to code a lot of things in if you're gonna have similar naming and so what we do is we create a for loop that has an index starting at 1 and if the index happens to be less than 8 it keeps iterating over the loop and right here the index gets added to using plus plus each time so each time it runs through the loop the index gets added to until it reaches 8 and then it doesn't run through the loop anymore so let's see what happens oops we have no property of i because we did not claim that right here let's put var i is an integer okay now you see there that's how you can run a loop a dynamic loop to populate your list items rather than having you can do it the manual way or the long way that I did first so I'm just gonna comment this out but I'll leave it in there for you guys if you'd like to use it let's open that back up okay so that pretty much shows you how to populate and dynamically create and position your list component items in Flash CS3.